Peugeot are making some seriously good looking cars right now. Here's another one, the Peugeot 508 station wagon. There's not too many cars on the market in Ireland bigger in terms of boot space and length than this. It is a bit longer than the saloon version or the fastback as they like to call it. Not only that, there's probably only the Skoda Superb Combi that is bigger overall. This is bigger than the Mondeo, the 3 Series and lots of estate versions on the market. It has a ginormous boot. Come take a look at this. One child seat. Stay. An umbrella, but that'll go into anything. Although it'll go in lengthways. And second child seat. All right, that's grand, yeah. More gadgetry stuff. They will all fit in there perfectly. The boot is huge. It's actually 530 litres with the seats up and just under 1800 litres if you fold the seats down, which is very easy to do, by the way. There's a couple of catches here. Just pop these and down they come. And the seat belts stay out of the way, so it's very quick and easy to do. And then this holder for the rear parcel shelf. You just push it in one of the sides, out it comes. There's nowhere in particular really in the boot for this, but you can pop it under the rear seats on the carpet. And it's fine. And you can get all of that stuff down very quickly. And then at the front of the car, you still have such a practical bus that looks like that at the front. There's a good few engines that you can get with the 508. In Ireland, probably the most popular one's gonna be the 1.5 diesel with 130 brake horsepower. Shout out to all the people watching YouTube reviews going, I still want a diesel. In Ireland anyway, the road tax is 190 euros, so that's cheap. And it will do somewhere between sort of five and late six liters per 100 kilometers when you're in the cruise. And I've driven this car extensively this week, motorways, city traffic, at speeds that you probably shouldn't be going at. It feels solid, composed, it's quite low down, so it handles well. We'll cover all that when we take the car for a spin later on, so hit the subscribe button and pop the bell notification. You'll get a pop-up next time there's a video ready to go on the channel. So let's check out more of the interior of the 508. As I'm getting in, I'll just show you some more sexy shots of the car. Keyless on those doors in the GT line version, which means you can just relax about the key and just leave it somewhere that's convenient. So the same layout as the saloon version, which is beautiful. It's kind of angled towards the driver. You get these piano key displays that control your sat nav, your tunes, your uh, climate control, and some functionality for the car. A lot of it is touchscreen, including the aircon. There is one button that you can do with the aircon, and that's to turn it off. But apart from that, everything is digital, everything is controlled pretty much by these piano keys. You have your storage down here that can hold things like a pair of sunglasses, for example, because there's nothing to hold them up here or in here. Uh, electric handbrake, massive armrest. Now, I can't quite fit. The door bins do hold a large bottle of water in there, and they're carpeted, by the way, which just softens noises. Uh, I can't quite fit this in there, but my missus is one of those stupid, got a text, Love Island bottles, and they can fit in there. There's an LED light and an auxiliary input in there, too. It's all feeling good, well stitched together, materials lovely and soft. It's a classy place. I've sat behind the wheel of this car on long journeys, I've done several hundred kilometers in the car this week. It's, it is a nice place to be. These seats are those German named AGR seats, which means they're very comfortable. There's lumbar support adjustment in them as well. And yeah, they do hug you, they grip you. Uh, not as soft as the Napa ones in the really nice GT line and GT spec version of the car that I had a few weeks ago. But you do get leg extenders, which are comfortable as well on longer journeys. And it's just, you know, it's good. It still has that cruise control here that I don't agree with that you can't really see it. But after kind of two days of messing and driving, I knew what buttons controlled what. It's just a pity you can't see it. A couple of paddle shifters here as well. 
Now let's jump in the back. Before we do, there is something different in this car compared to the saloon version. Can you guess what it is? Leave a comment if you can in the next two seconds. Well done, if you've figured out what it is, it's the fact that the sport wagon version has more room for rear passengers. The button in the front for the driver that stops the windows going down also electronically puts the child locks on. So you can just turn it on and off with the button and stop the little you know what's jumping out of the car on the M50. There's door bins down here as well. They do take smaller kid sized bottles, which is convenient because it's generally going to be kids in the back. There's two USB charging points here, some air vents that you can keep chilled with, the seat back pockets, they're netted, looks a bit messy, and you do get a center armrest with a couple of cup holders, just like in the saloon version, and there's access to the rear of the car. Now, some people have said rear legroom isn't great. I think it's fine. The seats do come down quite low. I know Matt Watson said he couldn't get his feet under there, but unless he has size 14 canals, which looking at him, he doesn't, I don't really see the problem. You still get decent space. Now there's two Isofix here. Thankfully, I had a lot of trouble with the saloon version. These zips were fine. I was able to get them up and down. So they've obviously been just worn in or something. I don't know, but maybe you should buy the station wagon version of it because they just seem to work better. There's little cutouts here. Uh, it feels a bit plastic at the back of that seat. I'm really kind of nitpicking, but from a driver point of view, the one paying for the car, you won't look at it, so who cares? There's little coat hangers up here. Shirt things, LED lights, pop them on and off. And if anyone knows, what are they for? Is that, is that more hanging, hanging stuff up there? The B pillar is huge, but I'll come back to that later on when we're driving. It's still got a bit of a, a slump in the middle of the floor, just like the saloon version, it's not fully flat. And it is definitely, I mean, it's more of a, a two adult size rear seat. Some of you have been asking what's it like with two and three child seats. You wouldn't get three in the back of this car, but here's what two look like. See, looking after you. You leave comments and I listen. You welcome feedback on this channel. Stay. Yeah, the doors kind of swing back and take your legs off if you're not careful. And she's just such a gorgeous looking car. Have you seen anything like it in, in recent times? Anything like it from Peugeot, for example. It's just class. Speaking of the kids, there's an Isofix seat up the front in the passenger seat, so you can actually get three in if you want. And I just want to say at this point in the video, I've used this car with all the kids stuff that you'd need to use a car like this this week. I've had trikes in the boot, buggies in the boot. Don't think I've changed an appy in the boot, but you could. And it just does everything. It swallows up all the rubbish they have, the changing bags, coats, daddy, scooters, you name it. It all goes in the back of this. If you've got a family and young kids, just get the station wagon version of it because it has more practicality and it still looks great. Like, look at it. Beautiful. I've deliberately left one thing missing in this video until this point. If you want a GT line version of this car, that's just the trim, the spec, it's not the engine. This version with a 1.5 diesel is just under 42,000 euro. Now, if I was buying a company car and someone else was paying for it, I would absolutely consider the 508 over some of the German stuff. It looks great, drives nicely, it doesn't drive as well as a rear-wheel drive car, fair enough. But the interior and everything, it's just, it's something different, you know? It's, it's different. Let's jump in and go for a spin. We'll cover what the fuel economy is like. How does it handle? How noisy is it? Hit subscribe to the channel, please, if you haven't done so yet, and the notification button. And stop moaning that I ask too much. I've only asked twice in this video. I won't ask again, but please do. It, hel it helps us grow, come on. Right, let's fire it up. Don't those lights look like, look at them. They just look brilliant. So the diesel engine, yeah, it's a little bit noisy. It rattle and under load, get a bit noisy. You got your eight speed automatic if you go for that. 
it's really smooth it's quiet when it's cruising along in eighth and it doesn't take long to get there either driving position is good the way it's all wrapped around you it gives you a sportier feel and the steering wheel does the same you got blind spot you've got lane departure radar guided cruise control that works overall pretty well the odd time in a motorway you're on radar guided cruise control mode and if you're coming up towards a car that's in a, a different lane to you it doesn't always manage to figure out that actually you don't need to slow down because there's a distance one thing i think that's very good about this car is the electric windows they sound posh don't they it's just Like if they've, if they've engineered that sound to sound posh. Nice work. Now, the B pillar here, right? I'm sure it adds to lovely lines on the outside of the car, and it does. But if you're checking over your, like blind spot is there, absolutely. If you're pulling out of a junction or something, you just want to check. It's like, hello? If you go for the two liter diesel version of this car, you can tow up to nearly two tons. So if you're someone who likes to go on their caravan holidays, uh, this car could be an option for you. I like the way you can customize your displays and your dashboards. You can have your nav there on the heads up screen and the main information screen, should you wish. Rear visibility out the back windows, not huge, but you get a reversing camera and you get a bird's eye view. Now it does make it up as it goes along. What I mean by that is it doesn't like it is a true image, but you have to drive, and as you drive, the image starts getting projected. It's not a proper, full-on 360 view of the car. I was trying to park somewhere yesterday, kind of on a, on a bend. It was it was a car park bend, not an actual parking on the road bend, and the overview thing really helped. Like you didn't even have to look around at all; you could just work it out. It's got camera recognition, so it sees the signs as you're driving towards them, and it'll update and it'll flash red at you. Kind of the speedo will pulse to tell you that you're breaking the speed limit, officer. But what about fuel economy? I'm doing five liters per 100 kilometers, and I'm doing 80 kilometers an hour. And with the WLTP madness that's going on, you're better off going for a car that just get those emissions down. <sighs> And even though it's a larger estate car, how does the handling hold up? Flying around the roundabout here now. There's no issues there. Holds tight to the line. I wouldn't mind the brakes to bite just a little bit more. Especially when you're going with a bit more uh, urgency, shall we say. You sit back into it, you let the radar guided cruise control do it. You kind of barely hold on to the steering wheel, you got your eight speed gearbox. Hello, corner. Power out of it. No problem, it's fine. It's all good, man. Uh, and you just, it's a, it's a motorway car all day long. It will just get you from A to B in comfort. It looks cool. Shut up, land departure. Also, the vehicle uh, close warning on the display as well. If you do get too close to a car in front, just remind you that you should probably back off there, pal. The saloon's probably a little bit better to drive in terms of handling, but you know what? I mean, it's not it's not a, a huge difference, and the practicality that this car gives you that's the thing that makes the difference, you know. So. If you need the extra space, I would definitely go for the station wagon version of the car. Wouldn't even think about it for a second. Now it's expensive, it's expensive for a Peugeot, I get all that. I think take it for a test drive and let's see what I mean. This is probably the best of both worlds. It still looks good and you can carry a small gaff in the boot. And that's kind of important if you're looking at this style of car. So thank you for watching. Hit subscribe to the channel. I said I wouldn't do it a third time. Forget it. Do you know what? Don't bother. I wouldn't do bother, but you know. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Like this video, share it, leave a comment if you've got a question about it. 
uh, there is the other video of the uh, saloon version which you just pop up there you'll you'll get to watch it and i'll see you very soon some good stuff coming up with the channel in the next few weeks some evs as well so we're jumping from diesel to electric we have quite a few electric cars on the channel that's coming down the road and some stuff from germany with the blue and white badge as well so talk to you very soon Cheers.